Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ryan and I'm an architectural intern working in Wisconsin. Today, I just wanted to briefly go over what are the AREs? What are they? What do they entail? And what are we getting ourselves into? Now, really quickly before we get into the video, and I really don't like doing this, but uh, if you guys find this video helpful, it'd be awesome if you could hit the like button. That way this video reaches a lot more people, or at least has the potential to, and hopefully if it helped you, it can help somebody else. So thank you. So what are the AREs? Well, if you haven't figured it out, ARE stands for Architectural Registration Exams, and it's a series of six exams that one must complete in order to become a licensed architect. Now if you've watched one of my previous videos, and if you haven't, I'll have it linked up here or down below, uh, but I believe the title was How to Become an Architect. And in that video, I kind of gave a broad overview of the necessary steps that it takes to become a licensed architect in the US. And really it comes down to three things, education, experience, and exams. And for this video, we're gonna be talking about that third thing, the exams. And I'm gonna get into the six exams in just one second, but I guess before that, a uh, big question that everybody always has is, what does it cost to take one of these exams? And it's not exactly cheap. Each one of these exams is not only gonna cost you a bunch of time in preparation to study and whatnot, but it's also gonna cost you $235, at least at the time of this recording. So that means if you pass all six exams on the first try, it's gonna at least cost you $1,410. That's not too cheap. It's no wonder people spend so much time studying and preparing for each exam so that hopefully they can pass it on the first attempt. And also, I, I heard this point made on a podcast that I was listening to. I believe it was from The Life of an Architect. Um, but if you think about it, graduating college really isn't the end goal. The end goal is becoming a licensed architect. So again, that $1,410 is kind of a drop in the bucket when you compare it to the big picture. So now let's go through the six exams. I'm gonna kind of give a brief overview of what they might entail as far as subject matter goes, uh, the amount of questions on each test, the time limit allotted for each test, the pass rate of each test as of you know current time frame and maybe a couple other details. And all this information that I'm about to share with you can be found on NCARB's website and a few more websites. So I'll leave those linked down below and where I got all this information from, but I just thought this would be a nice overview. All right, so let's just start with the first one, practice management. So for practice management, there's gonna be 80 questions. Uh, the total test time that you're allotted is gonna be two hours and 45 minutes. Um, and here are just some of the topics that's gonna cover. Uh, business operations, finances, risks, and development of practice, uh, practice-wide delivery of services, and practice methodologies. And on the website, again, they'll go into a little bit more detail, but um, I just, like I said, I want to give a brief overview, um, just kind of get you guys going in the right direction. And so the pass rate for this practice management test it seems to be trending up. So if we go to um, NCARB's website again, I'll leave another link down below. Um, but practice management, so from late 2016 to about mid-2017, the pass rate for this test was 47%. Um, then after that, the remaining time in 2017 went up to 50%. And recently in 2018, it's up to 51%. So that's trending in a, a positive direction overall for the industry. Now the next one's gonna be project management. And this one's gonna be a few more questions. It's gonna come in at 95 questions. The total time allotted to take this test is gonna be three hours and 15 minutes. And here are some of the subjects that it's gonna cover. Resource management, project work planning, contracts, project execution, and project quality control. And the pass rate for this test um, is also trending upward, so from 56% to 59% in 2017 and to 62% in 2018. Now, currently I'm in the middle of taking some of these exams. I don't have them all finished up, but this next one is the first exam that I took and I actually passed it on my first attempt and that's gonna be the programming and analysis exam. So for this exam, it's gonna be 95 questions. 
time limit's going to be 3 hours and 15 minutes. Um, and some of the topics it's going to cover are environmental and contextual conditions, codes and regulations, which is going to be a reoccurring theme, um, site analysis and programming, and then building analysis and programming. And the pass rate for this one um, is dead even. So for the three times I've tracked this exam, um, it's 53% every single time. And in case you're wondering why I started with the programming and analysis exam, is I just felt like I knew the most about this out of any of the exams. So I just read through the descriptions, the subject matter that they would entail, and I thought that you know my knowledge base so far in my young career um, was best focused on this exam. And I talked to a lot of people that basically just start at the top at practice management and work their way down. And I felt like if I did this personally, um, I didn't feel like I knew really anything about practice management. And I felt that if I were to take that one and fail it, I would really get discouraged before any of this got underway. So that's why I started with programming and analysis. Moving on to project planning and design. Now this one's going to be one of the bigger ones. Coming in at 120 questions. Uh, they do give you a little bit more time, so they give you 4 hours and 15 minutes for this test. And some of the subjects that it will cover are going to be environmental conditions and context. That one sounds familiar. Um, codes and regulations, again. Building systems, materials, and assemblies. Project integration of program and systems. And project costs and budgeting. So now this one's getting in a little bit more into um, you know, the end of schematic design and into design development of a project. So that's why you still see you know, like the environmental conditions and context as well as the codes and regulations. Those two are kind of gonna be in a lot of these exams, um, but now you start getting into actual systems of the building and how you can integrate those into the program and make everything you know, a unified uh, design. And the pass rate for this one um, actually is trending down just slightly. So 2016 through 17, it was at 50%. End of 2017, still at 50%. But now in 2018, um, it's down to 46% pass rate. Moving on, we have project development and documentation. This is actually the one that I'm currently studying for. Um, this one again is going to be a larger test. It's going to be 120 questions once again, and it's going to be four hours and 15 minutes allotted time to take the test. Um, some of the subject matters are going to be pretty similar to the previous exam. So integration of building materials and systems, construction documents, project manuals and specifications, codes and regulations again, and then cost uh, construction costs and estimates again. Now moving away from project planning and design and into this one project development and documentation, it's kind of like moving from the end of uh, design development into construction documents in a typical project. And so this one is also trending down just slightly. Uh, 2016 to 2017, it was at 56%. End of 2017, still at 56%, and then through 2018, it's down to 53%. So now we move on to the final one, which is construction and evaluation. Now this one's gonna be a little bit shorter than the previous two. It's gonna be 95 questions. Um, they're gonna give you three hours and 15 minutes to complete this exam. Uh, and here are some of the subjects that it will cover. So pre-construction activities, construction observation, administrative procedures and protocols, and project closeout and evaluation. And what I've heard about this one, and it will become evident once I tell you the pass rate, but this one actually seems to be one of the easier ones for people. And it's actually trending up quite well. So 2016 through 17, it started at 53% pass rate. Then at the end of 2017, it went up to 61% pass rate. And then through 2018, it is at 70% pass rate. I hope you guys found this overview helpful. And if you did, remember, it just takes one second to hit that like button. Um, or just share it with a friend that might have some of these same questions that you had. Now, I know I didn't go into a whole lot of detail in this video about each of these exams, but I plan to in upcoming videos, so stay tuned for those.
If you guys have any other questions that I may not have covered, please go ahead and leave those in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer each and every one of those. Again, remember all the links to the resources that I pulled this information from will be linked down in the description box below. And finally, thank you guys so much for watching. It truly means a lot to me. My only hope is that at the very least, you got a little bit of information out of each of these videos that I make. So if you have, awesome. So thanks again for watching and until next time. Hey guys, if you haven't already, click to subscribe right up here. Otherwise, if you want to watch some more of my videos, there's going to be two playing in these two corners. Take your pick.